Hello everyone and welcome back to Walk and Talk on Onco Daily. My name is Tatia Markarian, I'm your host as always. And today we have Dr. Kalam Kedan as our guest. Dr. Kalam Kedan, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Greg Kalam Kedan. I'm a uh, medical oncologist specializing in uh, thoracic oncology or lung cancer treatment at the University of Michigan. Okay, thank you. So Dr. Kalam Kedan, um, we're gonna take a little walk. Sure thing. And I'm gonna ask you a couple of personal Silly, funny, maybe deep questions. Okay. So let's get going. You bet. Okay, perfect. So let's get started. So you are a very busy person. I know that. What does your perfect day look like? Um, my perfect day probably has nothing to do with medicine. Yeah, that's uh, what I was asked. <laughs> so my perfect day would be, you know, getting up at home. Um, relaxing with my wife uh, and, you know, potentially with my children. Uh, my children are grown. <laughs> so, you know, the perfect day might have been a number of years ago when the kids were still small, mm -hmm. um, when the kids were still at home. Um, but that's not going to happen anymore, anymore until I have grandchildren, which I don't have yet. So, you know, relaxing with the family, um, doing things around our town. You know, Ann Arbor has a lot of open spaces, a lot of places to go, um, and a lot of things to do outdoors, mm -hmm. um, and playing with the kids, uh, and doing things with the kids, and doing things with my, my wife around town. You know, relaxing. Uh, relaxing. That's kind of the perfect day. Um, I'm not a big traveler or anything, not? so it's not like I feel I have to go somewhere to have fun. I prefer to have fun with the people that, you know, are... are meaningful to me oh that's so nice you're a family person then yeah i try to be uh, as much as work allows it right? <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> but sounds like you're trying so i we tried yeah we try okay um what about your job I, knew, I know that you are quite passionate and like what you do what excites you most about what you're doing what excites me most is the teaching aspect of it um yep i spend most of my time taking care of people with cancer and that is very meaningful um and gives you a lot of satisfaction at mm -hmm. times um but really the the teaching the seeing the junior people develop seeing them move on so a couple of days ago at the asco meeting mm -hmm. they had the plenary session the big session and the fellow who was my first trainee oh. uh, when i started on faculty uh, he was an intern at the time, a resident and an intern um, at Wayne State University, where I started my, my career. Um, he gave one of the plenary sessions oh, wow. um, up there. So, you Are know, you proud? Very, very much so. <laughs> you know, seeing him up there and what he has become, he's a cancer center director, he's got an endowed professorship, um, you know, and seeing how far he has come and what, you know, uh, what became of his career. Uh, and I have several former trainees who are like that, mm -hmm. who are, you know, have risen to the top of their yeah. fields. Uh, and that, that's what's satisfying. Because when you're teaching, you can amplify what you could do mm -hmm. uh, as a person. And seeing them go beyond what you could do and what you have done is it, it, just so, so satisfying. Uh, to work with the young people, to get their new ideas and hear their new ideas and develop things with them um, is really what keeps me going. Uh, at this point, you know, is, is working with the younger people. So also seeing the results. Of... And seeing the results, seeing that it did pay off, right? Yeah. Uh, over time. Um, and that however which way you can inspire them, even if, you know, they went well beyond what you could do, at least you got them on the right track. <laughs> you got them going. At least. <laughs> uh, initially, right? You can't take full credit, but you can at least think you got them on the right track. I know a couple of people who are inspired by you, so... Talking from their perspective, you are doing a wonderful job in assuring that the future of medicine, the future of humanity, you could say, is, I do believe, in good hands. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll tell you, working with uh, Mune, who's taking the pictures here, <laughs> um, and, and others in Armenia for the last couple of years um, has been probably the most enjoyable thing I do with really? my, my time right now. Oh, that's so nice um, to know. So it's just being able to give back, 
I mean, I realize, you know, every day as a diaspora Armenian, yes. you know, you realize how lucky we were to have my grandparents end up mm -hmm. in the United in States. Yeah. Um, and there, there's always a, a little bit of a pull and push because you realize that your luck was due to other people's very bad luck um, at that time when they but when they that's came life, over. Right? That's life, yeah. right? And that's the way it works. You have to come to some grips with that. Um, but being able to give back a little bit, um, you know, and help in any way possible, you know, asking uh, Gevorg and Yune, what what do you need? You know, what what can <laughs> we do to help? Um, and and trying to pay it forward in, in that way. We are so thankful out. to you for that, for your thoughtful gestures towards us in Armenia. Well, it's, I think it's worth it. It gives me a lot of <laughs> it gives me a lot of pleasure. I hope you're getting something out of it. But oh, we are. I, I enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> just as much as we. I think so. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, another question is: um, I, You said that you don't like to travel, but do you have a bucket list? Do you have anything? on your back is this that you haven't done yet but really want to or about to i i not really um you know my as a family one thing that we enjoy doing and maybe part of our perfect day does maybe in, uh -huh. involve some travel is we go to the national parks ah. um as a family in fact even last year when the boys are grown up and everything we still we still did it right um and you know, hitting more of the national parks. We've been to about 15, 20 national wow. parks in the United That's States. And there are 50 some odd, I think, national parks in the United States. So, you know, continuing to do those parks with the boys and hopefully at some point in time with their families, you know, would be something that I want to continue. Which is the next one in the list. Doing. Um, they're talking about Yosemite, mm -hmm. um, which I have been to, but I was alone years ago when I went oh, there. That's different now, um, isn't it? And, you know, family. talk about going with them. You have to pick the right time. Now that they're out of school, um, it's probably easier because you can mm -hmm. go with the off times because um, it's too busy during the summer. Sounds so, like you have a plan there. Yeah, yeah. And we'd like to get up to some of the more northern ones like uh, in Montana and uh -huh. Alaska um, as well. Yeah, so. It does sound like a bucket list though. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except I'm not looking at, at kicking off anytime soon. Other, uh. other than that. Well, come on. You never Please. know. You never know. But. <laughs> Maybe not to that extent. <laughs> yeah. right. Okay. Sounds fun, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, getting out there and, you know, hiking and doing things in the, <laughs> in the wilderness is, is fun. Would you ever change your profession? Would I change at this point? Or would um, you like to, if, if you could, maybe, would have you changed it at some point? Well, you know, the thing I've been looking for a little bit now, because I am nearing, you know, i got to look realistically, I am nearing the, the, the probably the latter part, the end of my career, um, is trying to get into something where the teaching is the primary ah, thing I okay. do, rather than being a secondary thing that mm -hmm. I do. Um, so that's what I've been looking for. It's not easy to find that kind of position mm -hmm. in the United States. Uh, in medicine yeah i know um, because lots if you're, of competition as well right lots of competition and if you're an md right you're expected to make money for the institution yep. by seeing patients that's mm -hmm. what makes money teaching doesn't make money yeah that's true um so i've been looking for got a poll behind your new name <laughs> <laughs> um i've been looking for you know things where i can do more focus on the teaching rather than being an ancillary thing and if I think about what I would have done if I hadn't gone into medicine, uh -huh. you know, it probably would have been teaching, um, as either whether it's high school or, or college type type teaching is probably what Sounds I would. Sounds like you really really like done. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's I enjoy seeing people learn new things and develop, and you know, teaching is the best way to learn as well. Oh, really? Um, is it? Yeah. So teaching keeps you learning other things in order so to you teach can it teach. to other people and you have ah, to learn it really true. well in order to teach it that's true and in oncology and medicine in general right things are changing all the time oh yes drastically and very fast right and and talking to the younger people the questions they ask it always keeps you on your toes it keeps you learning new things and moving forward um, which you have to in oncology because it changes so fast yeah that's true 
Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Kramer, okay. for accepting our invitation, sure thing. for doing this with me, and thank you everyone for watching us. Stay tuned for further Walk and Talk to Monco Daily. It was Tate Markarian and Greg Kalamkarian for you today. See ya. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.